hi guys in today's video i'm going to walk you through how i came up with this logo for a construction company using grids so i'm going to walk through the whole process in illustrator making sure the logo is well structured and well spaced with the word mark let's get into it all right guys just a bit of context about sari so the main goal of the brand is to help middle income earners get access to safe and quality housing and they had an existing logo which felt kind of outdated to them and didn't really represent how they wanted to be seen as a company so we had to work on a new logo and visual system for them and i came up with a couple of sketches and it was a tedious process but one logo kind of struck my eye because they had the idea of uplifting people which is what they were majorly doing and putting them in quality households they also had that letter t shape inbuilt within it so i decided to explore the sketch on paper just to refine it a little bit and it just goes to show that you don't really need to be an expert at drawing before you can design logos you just need that one logo to work and then you build it out from there so this is the final sketch guys let's get into illustrator and make this logo all right guys we're in adobe illustrator now and i've brought in my sketch I'll just double click the layer with the sketch and dim the image by about 50% so it doesn't interfere with what we're doing. I've, I'll create a new layer now and I'll just lock down that's my sketch layer so I don't accidentally move it. Now I'll select my rectangle tool on the second layer and I'll just roughly draw a rectangle which is going to serve as our base for the thickness of the logo. I've just set the stroke to 2 so I can clearly see it. So now I'll duplicate that rectangle just by the side and reduce the width by 50%. So that's going to form the inner white spaces across the logo. So now I can drag in the main rectangle and it's going to be the same as the one at the bottom. So I'll just create a duplicate and position it there as well and just drag in the width so it aligns properly. All right, so our logo is taking shape. The top here kind of extends, so I'll just drag it a little so there can be a cut when we put it. Now I'm going to form the inner spacing right there, and I'll just drag in that smaller rectangle in place and extend it so that it forms the full diagonal length. And you can see how that's coming out nicely. So for the inner spaces as well, I'll drag in that smaller rectangle and just align it properly at the bottom. Alright, so next we're going to form that middle stem of the logo. I'll just drag in our main rectangle and extend the top so we can cut that off with the shape builder tool later on. And I'll draw a center line which is going to serve as the direct center of our logo. Now, to form the top section of the logo, I'll drag in our main rectangle and I'll just copy the angle of rotation of the smaller one which is about 296 and paste it in there. And I'll just drag in the main rectangle and try to align it as much as I can. This might take some time, but just try to be a little bit patient and you should get it right. And yeah, that should work. So I'll zoom out right now and just select that rectangle and extend it forward. So I can cut the excess with the shape builder too. So I'll also drag this as well. And... The left section of our logo is formed, so I'll just select it. I'll select my reflect tool or you can click on O. Select that center line and alt and drag to flip it directly to the right. So we don't need to start forming the right side again. We already have that using the reflect tool. Alright, so I'll create a new layer and call it fill. And I'll go to my second layer with the sketch and copy everything and paste it directly into that fill layer while I lock down the sketch layer. So now we have two separate layers with the direct sketch of the logo. So I'll just use my shape builder tool to fill in all parts of the logo that I need on the third layer. Alright guys, so our sketch is almost ready. We just need to remove all the straight points. To do that, make sure everything is selected. Go to properties on that pathfinder just click on trim and that's going to take out all the straight points so now we have just the logo with the outline in the layer below it 
So I used that outline layer to form the grid behind the logo. I just deleted the sides of the rectangle so they are just free lines. But that's not all. To the typeface, I came up with this list of typefaces but I decided to use this one at the top left called Can It. And I also came up with a second option during the project. Let me know which one you guys prefer. I finally decided to anchor on the one by the left and something didn't just feel right. It felt like the logo was floating in the air. So I took it back to Illustrator, aligned it to the base of the logo and we had our final logo. I just used the same unit spacing I used on the logo mark itself just to create the unit spaces between the logo and around it as well. For my brand presentation, I came up with these mockups just to help to sell the vision of the brand and the idea behind the visual identity to my client. And when we are finally aligned, I came up with this brand guideline so they can take on the brand visuals forward. I was really excited at the end of the project and I created some social media content around it and also added it to my Behance portfolio, link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and if you would love to know how to build brand guidelines for your next logo project, just click the video on screen. Bye bye.